1523 train to Hinter Pupikon. Stefan Biedemann is reading a book on self-improvement. His wife, Sarah, sits beside him, dreaming of another life and another man. The shift in her position proves uncomfortable. The same thing happens every night. Stefan worries his arm may have suffered permanent nerve damage. In the end, Sarah succeeds. Self-improvement will have to wait. Also on the train are Hans Peter and his new partner, Anne. They met the night before at an over-60s swingers party. They are both very hungover, and Hans is trying not to throw up again. To Stefan, they symbolize tradition, conformity, and suffocation. Is this what his life is to be? Or maybe Sarah will die early. She does have that mole on her back. Could be cancerous. And then again, all of her grandparents are still alive. All of Stefan's are already dead. The train conductor desperately needs the toilet. The only cubicle on the train has been rendered out of order by Hans Peter. The conductor is struggling to control his bladder until the last station. He shouldn't have had the curry for lunch. The Jalfrezi always causes problems. The final passenger in the wagon is Nina, a third-year philosophy student. Nina is reading Socrates and fears that we are so shaped by societal norms that it's impossible to truly follow his advice and scrutinize our lives. Stefan finds her pretty. For him, Nina seems to represent the perfect woman. She's beautiful, intelligent, and awake. Did she look at him? She did. And yet we believe what we want to believe. As she departs, Nina again thinks of that quote, the unexamined life isn't worth living. Catching her reflection, Nina realizes self-examination is always limited. Stefan thinks she wants him. They could run away together and live a simple life unconstrained by ties and books on self-improvement. She wouldn't trap his arm when he sleeps. And yet, he knows Sarah, and she knows him. Maybe another time. Unaware of her husband's struggles, Sarah wakes and realizes she has to leave him.